We are in the basement of Jonathan Edwards College at the JE Press. JE Press has been around since about 1936, so we are standing in one of the last remaining undergraduate print shops on campus. The unique feature of this particular space is that we're practicing typography essentially as Gutenberg envisioned it about 600 years ago. What we are specifically doing is printing from handset metal type. And up until about 1950, letterpress was just the way most things got printed. Almost every college had its own printing press in somewhere in the college that was sort of a service for students to use so that they could print like programs for concerts or like posters for events or their own stationery or any really anything that they wanted. You know, letterpress, I think it really is in service of the undergraduate experience. It's not just here for mere amusement's sake, like it, it does provide a practical function within the life of the college. It seems to be a more enriched uh, form of gift giving. <laughs> you know, this is something that I made and I'm sharing it with you. I think that, that's, that really appeals to people. The first step of letterpress printing, anything that's words, always starts with type. This is a type case. This is 12 point centaur. And each of these cases contains one font. And a font is one size and style of a typeface. We have about 385 type cases in here in the cabinets, which would be 385 different fonts. The first step to using type is composing. And this is a composing stick and it's got this adjustable knee here, so you can adjust how wide your line length is or your measure. Say I want to print the line, printing time, exclamation point. I'm starting with a capital P. I know where that is, and these go upside down, left to right, and then they line up with these notches on the top. Every character is upside down, but it reads left to right like normal. This is the process of setting type. Here is another example of a set page of type. This is a little bit fancy. I did this for Valentine's Day. So this is our Vandercook SP20. Now we can ink it up, take an ink knife, and we're just gonna apply it on. Now is the fun part. You can turn it on. Let this down, and then let down the rollers. I'm gonna use two sheets of newsprint for thickness because it's pretty thin. But first, we'll ink the cut. Set it to print, line the paper up, then when you roll it, and the grippers release at the very end of the bed. The era of letterpress really wasn't that long ago, and I think allowing students to participate in it helps collapse time in a way and connects them to a, a deeper tradition. <laughs> oh, oh, that's really? Oh, that's already amazing. I was a first year in Pearson. Yeah, I just was curious about it and I signed up. I just kept taking the classes and I kept just like showing up, and it sort of became my kind of like my evening ritual throughout all of first year. There you go. Nice. Nice. This is beautiful. <laughs> the quality of the work that people put out after only a few months of training is really impressive. I think that the constraints of it being limited by size and the number of sorts we have in a type case and time creates such a fertile breeding ground for people's creativity, even if they don't consider themselves a particularly creative person, being forced to work in these constraints produces incredibly imaginative stuff. Letterpress is in a way, it kind of it coordinates the, the hand, the head, and the heart in a way that other disciplines can't really. Yale is a place that you would come to be challenged intellectually and, and across various other academic disciplines. The way that letterpress forces students to participate in the craft and really slows them down, but gives them the agency to pursue their own creative ambitions. Um, I, I just think that's a, a priceless opportunity for the right kind of student. <laughs>